everybody, and welcome back to another exciting episode of 31 Days of Indie Horror. I'm your host, Jonathan Moody, and I've got an awesome guest here. Uh, I've had her on my show for Indie Film Cafe. I'm not sure she's, I don't think she, you've been on the 31 Days of Indie Horror. because I, no, I don't think so. I think I this is my first time. Yeah, and so I'm really excited to have you for this one. And uh, we chose not really, I guess it's a thriller, more or less, than a horror film. Uh, but it's a sci-fi thriller. It's called Another Plan from Outer Space, which kind of really disappointed me in one way is because Plan 9 from Outer Space is what it's supposed to be like, mm -hmm. right? Or whatever. And Plan 9 from Outer Space was a zombie horror film, a sci-fi yeah. horror film. <laughs> Another Plan from Outer Space. I don't see at one point they were calling it The Doomed. And I'm kind of glad they changed the title. I would that. have liked that one better. I think. Would you? Yeah, Would you? I think the doomed hearing about the you know Plan Nine from Outer Space fits better than another Plan from Outer Space because it it's not about zombies or anything yeah. like that. But doomed is perfect for what the movie was about. It sort of was, and uh, so to kind of get, give you guys like a little thing about this, like it was obviously, and there are going to be spoilers, you know we're going to spoil mm -hmm. this movie because we have to, there's just yeah. <laughs> no way around talking about it. Um, but there was, there was too much like set up for like a sequel that I don't think that they, here's what you do when you make a movie that, you know, is planned for like a series or planned mm -hmm. for a thing. You usually make the first movie open and closed. Now there's maybe something added on, like like you look at like Marvel. Marvel is perfect at this. They make yeah. Iron Man, but they don't like go like to be continued for it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They just say Iron Man, and then they kind of have it end, and then that kind of sets up for future movies. The problem with this movie is they didn't set it. They 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 kind of ended it where it was ambiguous as to what exactly everything, you know, like it's yeah. too confusing. Um, and I think that was my biggest problem with the movie. It was too confusing. Um, but I will say the actors in it, um, Jessica Morris and Augie um, Duke and a few other people that were in it, D David C. Hayes. I love these guys. Like everybody who's, you know, even all the actors who I'd never seen before did a phenomenal job. I thought yeah, yeah the acting was a lot better in this than I was expecting like once I saw what the movie was I was like oh this is gonna be like one of those like cheesy indie movies but like they were actually really dedicated to the characters they were playing I was like oh okay I see you <laughs> yeah like the acting was great um mm -hmm. some writing was pretty decent for the characters um mm -hmm. the problem I had with that was a lot of it was set in like just the desert them stuck in the desert for most of the time and yeah. so yeah, kind of, I mean, I don't know what you thought, but it got kind of boring for me at times. Same. It felt very repetitive. Just the, oh, we're stranded. We got to find help. We got to save resources. No, we're stranded. I'm like, yeah, you've said like, let's move on. But like, I also understand they need to set up the premise and like stress the point. But I'm like, there, I understand you have to spoon feed your audience sometimes but you've got to give your audience a little bit of credit at times too. Like, okay, they're smart. They get this. We'll move well, on to something else. I, 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 but there was times I didn't get some of it. Did you like, did you understand? Um, like, okay. So who lived, who died, who was like, I, I'm okay. like so confused. Like, okay. So, so I understood all of it until the last, like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. And I was like, what <laughs> what is going on all right also did i miss something was i like clocked out for a second because like there was one point where the the crews were separated right yeah. so and then at one point what's uh the the i guess the chief is the chief captain there's the chief the captain the commander the chief was the girl i think right was the Augie. girl no, the brunette, oh, the brunette. brunette yeah, 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 yeah. And so she, uh, all of a sudden, she lost the doctor, right? She couldn't yeah. find the doctor. And mm -hmm. they thought she was hallucinating or something, right? Like that he was never there. He was never around, whatever, right? Then we get them and they're all together. 
did I miss a step? Did they find each other? Did like, I I didn't see it either, but like, I was also walking. So (laughs) I was having to watch this on my lunch break. So I'm like sneaking, watching it (laughs) in the hallways. So I heard it happen. And then, you know, it went to the next scene. I was like, well, it must've been something visually. I I didn't hear any audio tell. Yeah. I don't think, I think there were a couple things where either they were they were doing that because like at the end of the movie uh he she's talking to the one guy uh about like he he's trying to say oh she's gonna you know she's gonna betray you and then you had seen that it's like i'm wondering if that was like an alternate world or alternate that's what i started wondering too it's like well maybe they're stuck in a time loop where that's why the doctor disappeared at first is because they like themselves from the future found him and took him away and then okay. and then when he was seeing the group that was his future self seeing his past self and it's like this you know that's what I thought at first but then she was like oh it's a hallucination and they were gone I was like well there goes that theory <laughs> oh no I don't think it was that I think that was exactly that theory because um did you watch all the way to the past the credits and everything no was there an after credit scene yeah there was so i didn't i didn't see it because tubi skipped it right so screw you tubi because (laughs) if you don't like hit something or whatever they just go on to the next thing and netflix is known for doing this too it's like Mm -hmm. you want to watch the full credits or whatever i like honestly i say if anybody wants to skip the credits they can just you know skip out of it like that is annoying but um so anyway like i missed it so then i looked on imdb i was doing some research on it and i figured out they said that they're you know watch on thank thank you imdb whoever put this up there they Mm. said there's two after credits there's one mid credit scene like you know takes place during the credits or whatever and then there's one after and the mid credit scene was stupid like i just did not (laughs) like it it was literally just them um uh it was just some kind of um general or whatever of the in 1940s telling the guy basically back off back off you know or whatever camera back off yeah there was no uh, to me there it didn't it didn't it wasn't to me it wasn't uh was it uh uh, mid-credit worthy yeah uh the post-credit was cool because what it happened is the chick from before, like the, the uh, chief mm-hmm. she walks into the same diner, walks up in a different outfit, walks up and sits down. And the girl says, do you look, you look familiar. How do I know you from? And there's like a cut, you know, or whatever. <gasps> so so time loop? It, I think either it was a time loop or the way that you were describing it as that, like, yeah, maybe their past selves, have come across the you know what i mean like there's yeah the, that, that would stuff be would, cool. we'll see that would be a badass sequel if right. they were setting it up that way right and unfortunately i don't think we're going to get a sequel mm. um sadly which is what happens with a lot of these indie films is they they plan for stuff but they mm-hmm. never but they're oh okay the biggest problem i have and this this is what everybody always tells me make your first movie and then once it's a success you can make series out of it. Problem is, what you need to do is you need to already have made like three together, right? Yeah. You know, so you need to start with one, you know, but have like the money for three projects. That way, if you are going to continue with it, it can come out like two years later, three years later, or whatever you want to plan to make it. But they're all made, they're all made around the same time unfortunately with indie films a lot of times you can't do that because you just don't have enough money to you barely have enough money to make the first one so (laughs) right so making three is tough so it just doesn't work for that so that's why i'm always like if you're gonna if you're not gonna go that route you need to make it where it's a standalone movie like iron man was because Mm -hmm. even marvel they weren't sure if it was going to be a success or not with Iron Man because Iron Man was Iron Man. Nobody, yeah. nobody knew <laughs> that. Like at the time, nobody cared about Iron Man uh, in 2008. Now it's like, it was a huge hit. Uh, mm-hmm. This movie, I don't think was a huge hit. And I don't think unless somehow they can convince an investor to give them money because the movie's 
if the movie made money enough or whatever to do a sequel i you know what i mean i i mm-hmm. think it'd yeah. be good problem is like unless they have a plan of where they're gonna what what's their other next plan you know and i just gave them the title mm-hmm. next plan from outer space um oh. right <laughs> you know like i i could see that happening i could see them doing another one except i, I don't know what they're like if they have an end goal for the yeah. for the series um so anyway to sum up what the movie's about basically is people crash land uh or a, a team let me read what uh imdb says mm-hmm. because they have actually the best um you know the, the best uh uh, I guess some info on it, uh, how to describe it. Because, yeah. I mean, I get what they're doing. And so it says five astronauts who return from a long, deep space mission crash land on Earth and find their hope for a rescue, quickly turning into a fight for survival. So, I mean, on the outskirts of everything, that is sort of what it's about, you know? Mm-hmm problem is they did have all these things so maybe there's like alternate versions of them that were on earth that was why we saw like um the uh the captain was captain the commander which was Mm -hmm. the blonde girl go crazy and shoot everybody and kill people right Mm -hmm. uh then you see sort of the other people i almost thought it was almost like pulp fiction where there's like Mm -hmm. three different like stories but they all kind of connect to each other yeah um but like you know kind of alternate versions of what could have happened to them i guess um but i don't know like i don't really i I don't know what their end goal was like is that is the commander still out there are any of the characters still out there um and it would have been nice at the end if they could have explained that like if uh even in that that well i mean i i even in that mid credit scene or whatever like the beginning credit scene where they cut to the stuff i didn't like they could have had a scene with uh with the other commander if she was still alive and showing something of what's going on sort of explaining a little bit of how you know because i didn't feel like it i don't feel like it explained enough and that was my biggest problem it ended very abruptly yeah i would agree with that so that was my only biggest problem with the movie is I just didn't feel like it ended well enough, you know? Yeah. But yeah. I mean, good for them for making a movie that I thought, like I said, was very well acted, um, except for the stuff that I didn't understand or whatever. It was, it was <laughs> well written, like in terms of like the dialogue and the characters and, and stuff. I mean, maybe it was too well written that I just, you know, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't get it. I mean, I don't know what you think. I, I, like I said, I think I got it for the most part. Um, I will say maybe it was both too well and not well enough written because like I said, it was very repetitive, but then there was that entire second half of the movie or like that last little bit where there was so much going on and I was very invested, but I was very confused. (laughs) Well, time loop uh, movies are very popular today. Mm -hmm. And if they can do it right, you know, it can make sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, generally speaking, what you want to do is you want to have uh, one character be in the time loop, you know? So if like, if you're going to have the captain uh, be in the time loop, she's got to, or the chief, sorry, the captain was the guy. Uh, mm-hmm. The chief, if you want to have her in the loop, uh, she needs to like wake up. She needs to be the one who wakes up and sees things, you know, differently or whatever and not know what's going on, you know? Yeah. Um, that could have been cool if they did it that way, but they did it the way, the way that I think just confuses me a little bit too much is just the one part where she, she's hallucinating. Then there's another part where they say the other chick's hallucinating, you know, and hearing stuff or whatever, or, you know, like and the doctor too, he hallucinated that chief was there to help him. Yeah. And the, uh, and the one captain, he heard that other guy's voice, right? Mm-hmm. So, Tubi does. I couldn't. I did not have my TV like totally loud, and mm-hmm. I could not hear the somebody. You know, there's supposed to be a voice warning 
the captain remember when he was like sitting there kind of like staring and he, he was hearing something you he kept telling everybody i hear something i hear something yeah and it was it, it said in the subtitles what the other guy was saying right but i, I couldn't right. i didn't hear it either mm -hmm. so later you see him say it physically is like she's gonna betray you you know right and i think it's a time loop yeah or, you know that, I, that it's gotta be there's it's, too many things that have happened where that's the only explanation how would right. he have heard it if it wasn't a future person saying it to him in the moment yeah i mean maybe maybe it's something i might have to like someday rewatch again and maybe i'll pick up on stuff but that's see when you're doing an indie film like that you've got one chance right yeah. <laughs> you got one chance to make people like interested enough that they'll want to watch it again. So you have to make it so good that people go, okay, like Donnie Darko, perfect example, oh my God. <laughs> right? That's an indie film, actually. I don't know if you know that or not. What? Yeah, it was not. Pro it was produced by uh, uh, Drew Barrymore's um, company. You know, I didn't um, know that. Independently. I movie yeah it's a fantastic movie and it's one of the proofs that indie films can now i mean obviously they had drew beermore's backing they had a lot more money than like you know this movie probably had um mm -hmm. i would i would say <laughs> um but you know there's there's cool things they could have done to make this like donnie darko um another cool idea would have been to switching from black and white to color at times yeah you know um i think you know especially when there's different stuff happening it might have like you might look back at it and go oh wow that's kind of cool or whatever but like when it's all black and white the whole time like it makes sense for the ending of them being in 1940s you know yeah. and everything didn't make sense for the whole rest of the movie just because like other than oh black and white looks cool like that i kind of liked it i thought it was cool i thought it was to show that they're on another planet and maybe the sun is hitting that planet differently. So colors don't show up like they do on earth. That's the way that I took it. Well, they actually, I think were supposedly on earth. They were, yeah, they, they were, but I thought they were on another planet <laughs> to begin with. So that's why I was like, Oh, that's a cool idea. Right. At the end, I was like, Oh, they're on earth. <laughs> They're on Earth in the 1940s, which I mean, yeah. like, like I said, it's a cool concept to do time travel in this sort of sci-fi, whatever, you know, world that they created. But it's just still, I feel like it sort of missed the mark when mm -hmm. it came to like some of the ideas and making sure that the, your audience understands this stuff. Because like, like I said, I, I thought I, I must have missed something when that happened uh when like you know when she said that that guy like disappeared and everything and then all of a sudden like they're back with the group and i'm like wait mm -hmm. did i did i skip did they skip ahead like what what literally happened here yeah. why are they all yeah. together again like as if they and like as if they didn't just find each other like you know <laughs> like yeah no it, i get it felt like there were things that were missing and um scenes that were missing and then i find out it's it's like the time loop sort of thing and i'm just like i i, I get it like i get the time travel aspect and i get maybe like maybe alternate realities sort of thing mm -hmm. but if you can't like explain the where the alternate reality starts and finishes i feel like the movie doesn't work yeah i wish if that's what it was about i wish there was something showing that that's what it was rather than the audience just kind of guessing that this was what it's about so yeah I so went back to my point of like spoon feeding the audience sometimes okay so if you had to rate this between one to five what would you rate it i'd probably give it like around a seven Oh no, one to five. One to five. Oh, so, I'm so sorry. No, you're no, you're used to my like <laughs> last time we did one yeah, to ten. It was one to ten. <laughs> no, I'm I'm doing one it five. one to five differently. So and and five means good. Ten yeah. no one uh, means bad. So yeah, sorry. It's been a no, long it's fine. <laughs> I have um, seen it's been sort of like a, that. A, probably a three. I I did enjoy it. There were some things that I had issues with. Um that I feel could have been very simple fixes. 
like there the one scene where uh commander is attacking the doctor they could have used a fight choreographer and if they had one they could have used a better one because it was very obvious that those were stage kicks um oh yeah when especially like when she was kicking him on the ground and everything i was just like something just like i sound I've right my sister had a stage fight and she could throw a, a more convincing <laughs> fight scene <laughs> there you that. go that was something that i was like oh come on um let's see i wrote down notes of <laughs> the things i wanted to talk about um this one is actually a complaint for whoever was dping that day or one of the days because there was a scene where I think it was chief and captain are talking and in the background commander it it was so windy and her hair blew over her face and so she was able to swoop it out but that I don't know to me that just looks unprofessional and if I was a DP or a director I would have cut it and shot that scene again just so that it can look cleaner like she handled it very well this is nothing against the actress she did a great job um because, you know, you're told as an actress, like, oh, don't move hair out of your face. Like, just let it happen naturally. But like her whole hair <laughs> was in front and she just very casually swept it away. But I just feel like had they reshot that scene and hopefully got a take where it, that didn't happen, it would have looked more professional clean. It been more professional. Yeah. It, I would have been more invested in what Captain and Chief were talking about than on Commander with her hair. <laughs> right exactly well there you go Uh, that's that's a good that's a good you know complaint i guess for it i i I never really like i don't know i don't remember that particularly you know so it wasn't something that just bothered me at all but i would understand for an actress's point of view of like looking at that going oh my god if i were if i were there i would have said hey can we i I bet if you were there you would have said let's can we do another take on that my my hair went like that we need yeah when yeah. I, whenever I watch indie movies, I always view it in a way of like, if I was playing that role, right? what would I have done in that situation? And I probably would have done the same thing she did, but I would have mentioned like, can we retake that? <laughs> um, just because, you know, you don't want to look bad or silly in the final product. Right. And I just feel like they really screwed her over in that scene. She looked great throughout the rest of the film. But in that one scene, like you can tell like how much it stuck with me because I know that had I been playing that role, I would have been regretting that the entire time waiting for the movie to come out. Like, oh, did it make it? Like, is that the one that's in it? That's that's exactly true. Um, actors probably like are, are fearful of how they're going to look compared to like, you know, uh, whatever, you know? Yeah. Like most most directors they're just trying to get that scene done and you know to the next scene to the best of the ability but even then most directors if the actor says hey can we do another take most of them should say sure because you know like even though we got we didn't get that unless they do it like three or four times and that keeps happening yeah well just, obviously yeah right there's nothing you could do but that seemed like that was just a win thing you yeah know, or whatever so and it's windy in the freaking desert, so I get it, you know. Absolutely, yeah, no, I totally understand it. That was just, you know, something, because I, I was taking notes as I was watching it, so it wouldn't be like trying to think back of like, okay, what did I think of this? So that was one of the ones I jotted down. Uh, what's another note? I had build up for the fire song written down, and I'm trying to figure out. Which one that was? I think it was when she was trying, or when she said she wanted to sing a song. I felt like it took too long to actually get to her singing the okay. song. Like that was a part where I didn't enjoy the script because they were making it seem like it should be more interesting than it was. Like it, it's just her wanting to sing a song and there's like, Oh, you can't sing that one. It has to be this one. I'm like, just I, who cares? <laughs> who cares? Uh, they're just saying like sing song. twinkle, twinkle little star or something like right. that. And yeah. I'm like, if you think you're on another planet, that would have been hilarious if that's right. the song that you chose. And especially since I think it's public domain, so you can't sing it, you know, like, no. Yeah. Can, yeah. You know. So I just, um, I felt like there was too much of a buildup for something that just was so unimportant to the storyline. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, like you said, if it were, they were on another planet, it'd be sort of funny and interesting and, and cool. But 
they weren't and and mm-hmm. i didn't think they even knew they were on earth i think like i felt like they they knew they were crash landed on earth so yeah because they, they didn't just... seem surprised when they saw other humans right yeah they and... like oh my god humans it was just like one water what? please <laughs> or they were like they saw like a they knew buildings were around so they knew i mean mm-hmm. that must be earth you know yeah but i mean then they didn't seem surprised or mad or whatever you know like oh my god you know they were just like okay you know like you said two waters you know it's Mm -hmm. all we want is water right now like we're thirsty what was up with them getting a freaking uh sandwich i don't know like that was the weirdest whole they're like oh my friend's been shot and she's like oh my god they need sandwiches what? <laughs> I, I was thinking he was gonna put it on his wound. Like, what was the? That was, I was like, is the bread gonna absorb the blood? Like, what? Is- I, I don't know. It was the weirdest thing because it was like, you know, they need sandwiches, and they're like, yeah, you also need to call nine one one because exactly. my friend's been shot. That's what we're trying to tell you. And I'm like, I mean. I mean, they knew right then and there. It was like sort of weird. I knew right when they asked for the um, newspaper that it was was supposed to be the 1940s. Because, you know, when you look at the place, it looks like it could be like a retro place. Like today, today you could find a diner like that. That's all set up to look like the 1940s. But then she looked at it and she was like, let me see the newspaper. She was like, read that time. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. I knew uh, okay. as soon as I saw the soldiers that found oh my god I'm so sorry it's so loud here um anyway so as soon as C- commander right the blonde yeah as soon as she found the soldiers and I saw their uniform I'm like oh they're in the past okay because that's not what modern day soldier uniforms look like and so I knew but it was still a fun confirmation when they got the newspaper because I was like, now they know. <laughs> now they know. So those people got arrested from, you know, or whatever. But like, okay, so they found like a thing crash landed, right? So mm-hmm. they thought automatically thought UFOs. They look, <laughs> they talk like humans. I mean, yeah. what, do, you, do they think like aliens look just like us? You know, like that didn't make any sense whatsoever. No, like not that. At- that just drove me crazy i I feel like like in modern times we'd recognize like oh aliens can probably transform themselves to look like us 1940s i doubt they knew anything about aliens um i'm sure they had speculations but i guarantee they still thought aliens were those little green men with antennas and not you know some hot blonde woman crawling out of the desert and they're just like shoot her shoot her what you're okay so you think you have an alien and your first thing is to kill it and not ask it questions about its planet right i hated the soldiers man yeah it made no sense and then <laughs> I on, and on top of that you know which i mean i on top of that uh like i guess what the whole setup was supposed to be was like because it was set in Roswell, New Mexico is where they're supposed to be, mm-hmm. right? So obviously Roswell, New Mexico is very famous for having Area 51 where yeah. there are aliens and everything. So are these the aliens that were supposedly have captured in the 1940s that are being held or whatever? Like, is that the idea of the sh- the movie or whatever? Which they could have done something like, um, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Uh, there's a lot that could have been done (laughs) yeah there was a lot that could have been done but unfortunately and it's all that last chunk of movie where there's so much happening and it could have been so cool like it had they cut out a good chunk at the beginning of all the setup of oh my god we're stranded and replace that with a longer ending explaining all of this i would have or even so much more or even better cut out all of that stuff had them been saved by the people in 1940s right Mm -hmm. then have it be set but see the problem is then you become a period piece and then you have to like get sets or you know um uh you know cars that look like they were in the 1940s and you know what i mean like you have to get things to make it look like that um or well they could have had a lot of like you know interrogation stuff with the area 51 
And then the whole time they're like, we're humans, you know, we're yeah. living in freaking, we're from the past. I'm sorry, you know, right? Because yeah. I, I love that line of, uh, th- this is the 1940s. Oh, we're just going to tell them that we're time traveling, you know, astronauts. Um, astronauts from the future, you know, like, are they going to believe that? <laughs> and that totally, that made me crack up because that is sort of how I would view 1940s where they would be like, what the hell? Like, you know, we're going to yeah. kill these people, you know, and everything. So I don't know. It, it was okay. You know, like mm-hmm. it was an okay movie. It wasn't terrible. I'm going to give it uh two and a half. You gave it three. I give it two and a half. Because honestly, I think it was it, it just for me. This is probably if if they didn't do do the thing at the end, you know. And honestly, if I weren't reviewing this, I probably would have stopped it like halfway through, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Because it was so boring for so long that it they didn't get to like the action till the end of the movie. To mm-hmm. last twenty something minutes in the movie is when things started actually happening, and. I was really disappointed by that because I was hoping all this stuff that was set up, I guess, whatever, all this other stuff was going to amount to something interesting. Then they took it to a different direction, Mm -hmm. which made it a little bit more fun. But had they, this been like a short, you know, or something, you know, like that could have been better. I think it would have done a lot better as a short. Right. If they had just condensed everything into like 30 minutes you know or whatever like they crash land they can't find the things they're in the time loop they go get crazy then they find out they're in 1940s that would be a perfect short this just feels like a a too long version of a short you know yeah and i feel um, like had they made it a short they could have got more funding to make a feature with that story exactly um because they would have had the great actors who did a fantastic job yeah would have had a concise storyline that interested people enough to go okay and maybe they did maybe they had done a short and we don't know it that they did that that pitched it and this is what they they tried to expand it and didn't work to me um Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now what now does that mean that i wouldn't watch the sequel hell no i'd watch the sequel and now i now i want to know what's mm-hmm. going to happen to these characters you know sadly i mean uh, if lance uh poland i think is his name who directed it um if he di- you know he puts it out again like does another movie um i i mean i i would hope that this movie does well enough where it gets a sequel yeah. and if it gets a sequel i'll be first in line to review it man um, i would audition for it are you kidding right. <laughs> then you, you would actually have something cool to like i i think they would do cool stuff with it because mm-hmm. all of a sudden if they say to be continued it's to be continued outside of the uh of them crash landing in the desert you know now it's into 1940s stuff you know so we're gonna yeah. we're gonna be in this 1940s world with these future people and cool cool stuff's gonna happen sadly uh we, i don't know like i don't know if that will ever happen or not um, but like I said, if it's called Next Plan from Outer Space, I want some kind of special thanks because <laughs> unless they already come up with that themselves, I don't know. But you know, uh, I mean, they could do that. They could do it like they've got another plan from outer space, next plan from outer space, the last plan from outer space. You know, <laughs> yeah. right? And like set it all up for like a series of of movies involving these people trying, you know, maybe they time travel other places or whatever, but. Like mm-hmm. they never explained how the time travel happened, so maybe they can explain that yeah, too. And this stuff, that would you know, be cool. for so, sure. And there you go. I just gave you guys like some cool ideas. You know, <laughs> uh, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed my review of it because I I didn't hate the movie at all. Like I no, I, no, I I did enjoy it. I just felt like I had a slow start, but the ending I was like, ex- okay, I like this a lot. Exactly. I was getting really bored, and honestly, you. I have the attention span of like a gnat. So like <laughs> the fact that I lasted the whole thing, you know, is usually a big deal. Um, period. Like the first 20 minutes or actually first 10 minutes should grip you. And mm-hmm. it was interesting enough. I wanted to see where it was going to go, especially with them in the desert, you know, but after a while of them just bickering like the whole time 
and stuff, which I I think is a always a sign of lazy writing when you just have characters that just bicker the whole time, you know. And it, it seems like it was constant bickering of the same thing is like, oh no, that's just a hallucination. Oh no, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I'm the I'm the captain. You know, you have to listen to me. And I always thought commander was higher than captain, but I might be wrong. Oh, I, too, but... <laughs> I might be wrong. I don't know. I don't. I don't even know what they were. Like they're sp- they're astronauts, and I looked up like astronaut ranks, and I did not even see captain as a rank. So yeah, I, I thought they were nicknames other than doctor. Obviously, he was doctor. But... He was a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> And he knew he had internal bleeding. That was the only thing I really thought as a doctor. I don't know if you would actually know your internal bleeding yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, that's something they find out that you have. You know, <laughs> you're like, not like, oh, I know it. I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> or something. I don't know. Uh, it was, oh, that, that movie. Oh, anyway, <laughs> thank you so much, Kenzie, for coming on here. This is awesome. Uh, I really appreciated uh, your words of wisdom here and everything. Um, (laughs) and everybody else uh tune in tomorrow where we'll have another uh another day uh and this is like this is out in april so i have no idea i think the next one might be in may so who who knows where (laughs) you know what the whole thing's gonna be you know and everything so yeah 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 thank you for so much and everybody uh tune in uh tomorrow have a good one Bye. bye